It looks like we keep having people coming and joining us. All right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Jing, why don't you get us started? Let's get started. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to ISIS uh, CPT webinar. Uh, my name is Jean Ma. I am one of the um, advisors at ISSS. Juan, you want to introduce yourself quickly? Yeah, sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Juan. I'm the ISS advisor as well. And it's our pleasure to um, share some CPT information to prepare you for the summer internship today. And we are happy to address some questions at the end of the webinar. Okay, so um, what is CPT? So CPT is a type of um, employment authorization for F1 students who um, wish to gain experience, practical experience in their field of study uh, while they're enrolled uh, at Penn as a full-time student. Next, okay. So what are some of the criteria for a CPT work authorization? Um, first of all, the the internship experience has to um, either require all uh, students in a program to participate in um, in an internship um, or the internship is an integral part of your established curriculum um, for example if you register for a cpt course and that internship experience fulfills that internship uh, the cpt course requirements which is the uh, most common scenario um, and um, at Penn among our students. Um, some um, programs do require internship, so that would be um, the case if your program requires to participate in internship uh, during a first semester or first year, um, that would be the option that you would choose when you apply for CPT. Yeah, Next. just to um, oh. piggyback on what Jean just said, for this degree required internship that waived out the one year requirement for students, oh. um, it, it's really rare. Um, it only happens at the graduate school. And as far as I know, um, only uh, grad school of education and also school of SP2, they have very few programs that has this degree required internship uh, you know, given to the students that we've had a one year requirement. For majority of PEM schools and programs, it's course-based instead of the degree required CPT for students to choose. All right, thanks Juan. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the eligibility requirements if you um, want to apply for CPT? Um, you first need to be in a valid F1 status. Um, you also have to be um, in a full-time student status for at least one academic year um, at Penn. Um, so for example, if you, um, it, generally speaking, so if you start fall of last year, um, you would be eligible for CPT this coming summer. Um, and then also you, have a, you must have a declared major um, to which the CPT internship is related. Um, so for some of the um, undergraduate students, if this is your first year, if you have not declared a major, uh, it's unlikely that you will be able to do CPT this summer, but you will be eligible um, for summer after your sophomore year, after you have declared a major. Um, and then also, um, you do need a job offer letter at the time applying for CPT, um, because CPT is job specific. Um, so for um, students um, uh, wanting to do CPT, you want to make sure that you have um, a, a course that you register uh, that you need for CPT. Um, so you need to register for that course uh, before ISIS can uh, process and prove your CPT authorization. Um, and then PhD students, if you're doing dissertation, and sometimes that dissertation requires um, off-campus internship experience in order to complete your degree requirements. So that will be fine as well. Um, and then just a general reminder um, that the, all the internship experience must be directly related to the major. Thank you, Jane. And just want to um, kind of uh, explain more details about the doctoral students in dissertation status applying for CPT. So if you are a doctoral student and you want to do summer internship, 
and you register for the dissertation course in the spring, you do not need to register for a specific CPT course in the summer again, unlike undergrad or other graduate master's student. So your doctoral dissertation course will carry from the spring term to the summer term. So you don't need to register separately in the summer. But if you are undergrad student or master's students, you have to apply for CPT at the specific term, which we will address it later. Um, so basically in the summer, you also need to register for a specific CPT course in order to do CPT. Correct, thank you. Sure. All right, so CPT application process. Um, once you um, secured a job offer from a company, uh, you wanna make sure that you um, receive um, an offer letter on the company's letterhead with signature. Um, and then you uh, work with your academic advisor uh, on determining the CPT course that you need to register for this experience. Um, once you have the course registered, um, you want to then go into IPEN um, and submit a CPT application request. Um, once it's submitted, you will go to your um, academic advisor first for review and approve, approval, um, and then you will come to ISIS for final approval. And once we approve it, um, we, it takes about three to five business days um, from the time that it's returned to us from your academic department. Um, we will then process the I-20 with CPT authorization and send you um, the I-20. Um, so we um, ask that you do not begin working until you have the CPT I-20 from ISSS. Okay, next. All right, um, so from this page, um, I will take over. Um, okay. So basically, thank you, Jane, for sharing. Um, so for CPT application, I think Jane has already explained about the eligibility for students to take and the procedures for students to take. And this, this page actually shows the flow of how you can request for the CPTI 20 from us. Basically, you need to uh, make sure your CPT application is within the term that you want to apply. So that to be said, if you're applying for the CPT in the summer term, then your CPT dates can only be started from the summer, uh, the, the day after spring term end date and the day before the, uh, the fourth semester start date. And also usually um, the reason why we recommend you to apply for CPT two weeks before your intended start date is because ISSS internally is going to take about three to five business days to issue the CPT I-20 for you. But before that, as you can see, you after you submit the CPT I-20 on IPEN, your academic advisor needs to review it. So how long will your academic department to take to approve the form, we don't know. So the earlier you apply for it when the summer course registration is open for you, you, um, you know, the earlier you can get your CPT. So usually if you uh, submit your CPT I-20 on IPEN and you have been waiting for a few days and you still don't have your CPT I-20 yet, please contact your academic advisor first to see if they have already approved your CPT request. Only after your school advisor approves it, then your ISS advisor can have the form waiting in their queue to be uh, reviewed. So um, first contact your academic advisor to get the confirmation, um, and then contact your ISS advisor to follow up with the status of your CPT request. Normally when your school advisor approves your CPT form, you will be sent an email confirming the school advisor has approved and reviewed your CPT uh, request. And then just wait for about three to five business days after you're receiving that email, your uh, uh, ISS advisor should be providing that I-20 to you. So this page is for some of the school that provides the uh, guidance on how to register, register for CPT course. Um, CS undergrad students can go to this page if you Google. Um, C's undergrad CPT, the page will show up. And then also for students who are in college uh, and your undergrad students, if you Google college, you can under uh, CPT, it will show up the page as well. So basically um, that to be said, if you do want to know what is a specific course you can have, and then you can register to use as a CPT course, you have to contact your academic advisor 
or your academic program to get the clarification. In most of the cases, students can, the, the program will have a designated course um, that, to, uh, that, that is used at the CPT. But in some other cases, students can form independent study course and then use that independent study course as your CPT. But again, you have to double check with your academic department, then register that course before you can engage in any off-campus employment, even if it's unpaid, even if it's voluntary. Otherwise, it will be considered as a violation of your F1 status. All right. Um, so again, CPT, um, so I need to see this one. So CPT is actually usually used for students when they are still in school. That to be said, if you are still study at Penn, we would recommend you to consider CPT instead of pre-completion OPT. Um, and the reason is because CPT is adjudicated within school level. So it's adjudicated by IAS's advisor, is not by the government. So it's consider considerably quicker than the OPT application. And also, um, you do not need to pay the uh, adjudication fee to the government. Um, and then the third advantage of using CPT is you actually would not consume your OPT time after you graduation to use. But again, as Jane has mentioned earlier, students will have to complete the one academic year requirement as a full-time student to be eligible for CPT, unless you are in a graduate school and that graduate program requires immediate participation of internship. And that happens really rare at Penn. Um, and also it has to be directly related to your major of study. Your CPT has to be approved and also your CPT employment study has to be reached before you can engage in this, in this type of job. A few reminder for our students is, first of all, if you participate in the full 12-month uh, full-time CPT, you would not be eligible for OPT at all. And another thing is the reason why we strongly recommend students to have a CPT to cover your status is because later on down the road, if you want to apply for OPT, STEM OPT, H-1B, or even green card, if USCIS find, uh, find out you have illegal working experience, that will, uh, that will actually, um, you know, play really negative impact on your immigration petition. So that is the reason why before you engage in any type of off-campus employment, even if it's unpaid or voluntary, please contact your IAS advisor to confirm. All right, so our, so the last two parts about the CPT is, um, CPT can be doing, uh, can be, uh, participated as a full-time and also part-time based. However, when school is in session, which means usually during the spring or uh, fall term, it has to be part-time, no more than uh, 20 hours per week. But if, if when school is in session, uh, in break, uh, like school is in summer break, and then you could participate in full-time CPT. If you have any changes to the employment, please inform your IAS advisor. For example, if you need to extend your CPT end day, you need to reach out to your advisor to discuss about the proper procedures to have the extended I-20. But again, like I said earlier, your CPT dates have your CPT, CPT dates have to be within the term. So if it is in the summer term, it can no longer be extended beyond the last the last day before the fall semester starting. And in this year, the summer dates should be you uh, one day after spring term end day. Um, the start date should be May 16. And one day before, the end day should be one day before the fall semester started, uh, which is August the 28th. You could have multiple employers, but your employer, um, you need to have the offer letter from, from the different employers. And you can only register for the summer CPT. You can register for just one course and participate in multiple employment. But each employer has to provide you the offer letter and you need to indicate those employers in your CPT application. So the last page is the social security application. Um, if you have the 
if you never have SSN and you want to apply for SSN based on off-campus employment, you could apply for CP. Uh, you could apply for SSN based on CPT. Um, but as long as you have the CPT I twenty issued to you, and also you have the uh, you you are. You can only apply for CPT, uh, the SSM based on CPT 30 days prior to your intended start date. So for example, if your CPT start date is in June, you can only apply for the SSN on May 1st, uh, June 1st. Then you can only apply for SSN on May 1st, 30 days prior to your CPT start date. And this information of documents to bring to apply for SSM based on CPT can be found on ISS's website. All right, so the next page is about the FNQ. Um, on this page, Jean and I will take turns to, um, you know, answer those questions. Um, so Jean, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, so how long does CPT take to, uh, it takes to apply? Um, so we mentioned that we require at least two weeks for you to submit. Um, so from the time that you um, submit to um, IPIN, um, when it gets when it gets sent back to us after your academic advisor's approval, it takes three to five businesses for ISIS to process your CPT I-20. Thank you, Jane. The next one is, do I need to have a job offer before I apply for CPT? Absolutely. As we mentioned during the presentation, you must have a job offer on hand but, and also register for a CPT course before you apply for CPT I-20 on I-10. Great, thanks. Um, do I need to submit my CPT request to USCIS? No, so as Juan mentioned, CPT is uh, processed and adjudicated within our office. We do not send it to USCIS. It's processed um, with I within ISSS. Sure. Next one. Can I start working after I submit CPT to ISSS? I guess you probably have already, if you listen carefully to us, I hope you have already know the answer. Um, the answer is definitely no. Submitting the CPT I-20 to ISSS does not give you this work authorization. You must wait until your CPT is approved by ISSS and also the CPT start date is reached before you can engage in the employment. For example, if your CPT start date is on June 1st, again, I'm using June 1st as an example, and you receive the CPT I-20 on May 27th, you have to wait until June 1st to start your employment. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, next question. I have submitted my CPT a while ago, but I haven't heard anything. Uh, what should I do next? So it's likely that your um, CPT request is with your academic department, your academic advisor. Um, so you can reach out to them, to send them a gentle reminder uh, to ask them to review your CPT request. Uh, because once it's re it's reviewed and approved by your academic department, it will come to ISS. Otherwise, we won't see your request on our, in our queue. Um, so if you haven't heard from um, from either ISS or your academic department, reach out to your academic advisor. Um, usually, it's with them. Uh, as as we mentioned, uh, once it's reviewed and approved, it takes us about three to five businesses to process your CPT I twenty. Thank you, Jane. Next mm -hmm. one, um, I just got an email from my school informing me the e-form is approved. Can I start working now? So this is really important for you to remember. Um, this is not the approval email from your academic school informing you um, the CPT is forwarded to your ISS advisor as not the approval for CPT. You have to wait until your ISS advisor sends you the CPT I-20 to inform you um, it's ready, and then you can start working by the CPT start date. So like I said, I, like I mentioned earlier, this email from your academic school is just to inform you the academic department has finished reviewing your CPT request, and now your CPT request is being forwarded to your ISS advisor to review. So just wait patiently after you receive this email from your school um, for about three to five business days, then your ISS advisor can provide you the CPT I-20. Okay, great. Uh, last question. Can I work with two employers under one CPT request? Um, we mentioned that you can concurrently working uh, with two employers 
um, for, for CPT, but you must have, make sure that you provide an offer letter from each employer and you must have CPT authorization from each, for each employer, then that is impossible. Juan, anything right. to add to that? Uh, I think that's perfect. <laughs> okay, Thank you, Jean. All right, so that's about end of our presentation. Um, and we prepare and also our prepared questions, common questions from our students. Now we are going to uh, address your question that you shared on the Q&A session. And again, uh, Jean and I will take turns to answer your questions. All right, so the first right. one, do we require a CPT for assistantship? So actually you do need to clarify what, what is this assistantship about? If this assistantship off campus or if this assistantship on campus, moreover, um, you know, moreover, if this assistantship um, is, especially if the assistantship is off campus, even even if it's uh, voluntary, even if it's unpaid, um, normally we would recommend students to consider CPT. So for this question, um, for the sake of time, please contact your IASS advisor to get further assistance. And we are not gonna uh, dive too details into this question, okay? All right, thank you, Juan. Um, my second question, how long CPT process from step one to three? Um, so I think we mentioned a couple of times. Um, we um, asked that you apply um, at least two weeks before, but if you can apply um, as early as possible, that will be very helpful. So it will give your academic department time and ISIS time to process properly process your I-20. Um, again, once it reaches ISSS, um, it will take three to five business days to, for you to receive the I-20 with CPT authorization. Thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm. um, so next one, will today's slides be shared afterwards or can I find the info on ISSS website? I think this slide will be, uh, this recording will be shared to our students um, and it will be, a link will be posted on our website as well. Okay, um, next question. Um, kind of first year um, MSC student apply for part-time CPT in the first year. Um, I'm transferring I-20 from my undergrad school where the one year minimum has already been satisfied. Um, if the if you are in um, School of Engineering, CES, um, CES has a very specific requirements in terms of CPT eligibility. Um, in order to, for C students to qualify for CPT, you have to complete at least six CUs, so six courses, uh, before you're eligible. So usually if you're coming to C from overseas or from another school, if you don't have um, six CUs by the end of the first year, you will not be able to uh, participate in CPT. But if you have complete two semesters um, at Penn and at CES, uh, you likely will be eligible for CPT in the summer after your first year. Thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. Is there any situ a situation where pre-completion -pre of PG is favored over CPT at all? Well, um, I would just say the, 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 the time that student can only consider pre-completion of PT is the time when the CPT is not working for them. For example, um, I know a program at Penn that doesn't provide summer CPT at all for their international students. So the only option left for students to do the summer internship will be pre-completion of PT, and there is no other option. So that will be the time that you can, if the CPT is not available for you, then you can consider pre-completion of PT. But in general, CPT actually is more favored than pre-completion of PT. Thanks. Um, next question, um, how closely related should your major and CPT be? I have a business related uh, job offer, but have a biology degree. Uh, the work can be somewhat related, but not 100%. Is that possible? Um, because CPT is curricular practical training. Um, so the experience that you engage has to be directly related to your major field of study. Um, so if you have a biology degree and a and job offer letter in a business environment, I think that's a, a, a stretch uh, for us to make a case that this is related. Um, and also when you apply for CPT, you have to register for a course within the, the program. Um, and then you, so you have to make sure that the CPT internship experience 
um, is related uh, because the course is, is within your, your academic department or program. Um, so if, if it's biology and business, I think it's a stretch there. Uh, Juan, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, and I would also say, um, based on your current description, um, we cannot def define if it's like directly related. So normally what I would tell students is, look into the detail of your job duties. So basically you do need to, for example, if you are in a business uh, centered company, but your job is to use your biology knowledge to provide, you know, to perform your daily job duties, then that could, uh, that could work. For, for example, like some students, they are in the computer science major, but they are working in the investing bank. Can they work in the investing bank? It depends on their job duties. So what do you, that's the reason why we do need the job offer from the employer. Um, and in the job offer, the employer needs to provide a brief intro, uh, introduction of your job duties, and that will be used as a baseline for us to evaluate whether this can be considered as directly related to your job, you know, to your major of study. So that's another thing for you to consider. Um, yeah. But again, the, the regulation, the U.S. immigration regulation requires students to, you know, do the job that has to be directly related to their major. Directly, so in, in my interpretation, um, it's definitely really close connected. All right, next one. Um, could you let me know when CPT course will be able to, when, when you can register for the CPT course? Um, I think summer registration has already started. Uh, for most of the students, um, you should reach out to your academic advisor if you um, are unsure um, if the course is eligible or ready to uh, for you to register. So I would say reach out to the academic department for confirmation. All right. So next one, I applied for my CPT on March 20th and have not gotten my I-20 yet. How can I know it is in the ISSS staff? So basically, like I mentioned earlier, your I-20, if your academic school has approved the I-20, a, a CPT I-20 request, you will be receiving an email confirming the school advice as the school has approved the e-form. So that means it, it's moved to ISS advisor staff. If you have not received that email, that's a sign that the form is stuck at your academic department. So you need to reach out to your academic advisor for further assistance. Thank you. Uh, next question. Um, internship start date June 5th. Um, the employer um, wants to submit tax documents to re which requires SSN. Um, so can I apply for SSN on May 5th? Um, the earliest, as we mentioned, uh, is 30 days before the CPT start date. So you actually cannot apply anytime before May 5th. So that's a Social Security Administration policy. Um, generally, if you apply um, within 30 days, it's likely that you will receive SSN by the start of the internship. Um, if not, I think you can reach out to the employer just to let them know that you're in the process of applying for SSN and you should be receiving it anytime soon. Um, and I think employers generally understand that. Yeah. And then also just want to let our students to know, SSN is not a type of work authorization. It's usually for payment related issues such as tax, where if you want to get registered on your employer's payroll. So that's the reason why you need SSN. So that's, that to be said, you really have to wait until you have social, uh, the CPT before you, you know, start working with your employer, even if you have SSN. All right, next one. My offer letter includes everything else, but not including end day. Numbers of work hours per week, job duties. Should I ask for a new one with all the information included? So basically on the offer letter, it has to be on employer's letterhead. It has to include, um, you know, your like work period of time. So sometimes they have like a star day and it said the student have to work for a few, like, you know, 10 weeks then that's actually indication of your working period of time, even if it doesn't have a specific end day. Um, so students will need to calculate from the start date, um, you know, the, the 
calculate the 10 weeks out of the start date and then to provide us the end date. But if you could um, ask your employer to provide such a um, updated letter, that would be easier for us and also easier for you. Um, again, the job offer letter has to be including the job duties. So if you don't have the job duties, please inform your advisor to provide an, um, uh, an updated one. It doesn't need to be in detail, detail, but we need to see the brief, you know, brief information of your job duties. Great, thank you. Um, next one is a recording uh, going to be shared. Yes, it's going to be um, on our website, I believe, uh, with the link. Um, so you can go back and review the information that's shared today. All right. Is there, uh, is there a cumulative lens for CPT? Well, so CPT, how to say that? So if you are doing full-time CPT for accumula a, a, a cumulative 12 months, then you cannot apply for OPT at all. But for part-time CPT, as long as you have a valid CPT course, um, then you are, and you have a job offer, theoretically speaking, you would be able to apply for CPT without limitation, um, as long as you have the CPT course and job offer. However, for Penn students, some programs, they would only allow their students to do CPT, especially for some graduate programs, they would allow their students to only do the summer CPT, or um, you know, it really depends on your academic department has a CPT course for you or not. So that to be said, full-time 12-month CPT, um, we normally don't recommend students to do it because it will make you become eligible for ineligible for OPT. But for part-time CPT, theoretically speaking, as long as you have a course, um, and you have a job offer, you could try. Um, the only thing is for the last semester CPT, if you are doing, if you are considering of doing last semester CPT, uh, we actually take a, a pretty strict stance on it. The reason is because the U.S. immigration regulations for, uh, forbid students to, you know, use CPT to start their post-graduation employment earlier. So if you um, do consider CPT, um, check with your academic department to see if they would have any course on the last semester. And that course has to be integrated part of your degree. It has, it cannot be a random course that you want to select as your CPT course. But again, for that issue, check with your advisor. We can talk about that in more details. Thank you. Um, next question, if I am double, if I'm a double major, can I use one for CPT and the other for OPT? Um, so when you apply for CPT, um, you just have to make sure that the experience is related to a major, um, not a minor. So you could use uh, the CPT internship for using one major for, for the CPT experience as long as it qualifies for CPT. Um, when you graduate to apply for, for OPT, um, then again, the employment uh, under OPT uh, must be related to your major uh, field of study. So if it, right. and also if you have a STEM degree, then you can use that STEM degree or major um, to apply for STEM extension um, towards the end of your first year OPT. All right, next one. What does it mean to have a job that's directly related to your major? Um, so just like I, I often explain this to students during OPT webinars or um, advising sessions with students about this. So you have to keep in mind, IAS's advisor is not a subject expert of your field. So we actually don't have um, like a solid knowledge background to determine if it's directly related. Um, so that to be said, we require that's the reason why we require our students to provide the job offer letters um, that includes your job duties um, as a baseline for your advisor to review and then to adjudicate if it's logically to us. And it, it is, you know, for example, you're doing bio, you, you have biology major, you are doing biological uh, related a job. 
or if you're doing, even if you're in a business consulting firm, you are using your bi biology related knowledge to perform your job duties, um, that would also be considered, that also makes sense to us. So just keep in mind, um, we will buy your employer's word, we will buy your words. So whatever you provide to us and it makes sense to us, that will be recorded in your immigration record. That to be said, down the road, when you are applying for OPT, STEM OPT, H-1B, or even green card, when the, the government USCIS looks into your immigration record and they find out your job, uh, you know, your job history, and then they look at the, the information that's in recorded in your record, and then they think that makes sense, then that's okay. And then whatever you what if you provide the information to us and we don't think that makes sense and it's recorded in your immigration record down the road, it might play a negative impact on your other immigration application. So um, there is no simple, a simple answer to your question, what, how to de define what is direct relation to your major. Um, we just use some other uh, metrics to, for us to, to make this judgment. Okay, uh, next question. What does it mean for a graduate student to be in dissertation status? What's the difference between, oh, difference from um, being just a PhD? Um, so when you enroll in a PhD program, usually the first two years or so, um, you will spend time um, taking courses, coursework. And when, once all the coursework is complete, you will be then focusing on your dissertation research. So when students uh, will say on dissertation status, meaning that they have already completed all of their coursework and they're just doing dissertation research for their for their PhD degree. And then sometimes students would need to do CPT um, off campus um, to collect data for their research. Um, so that's when CPT would come in to, to place. All right, next one. I'm an international student and planning to do an internship in the winter, but it overlaps with the spring term um, because what can you do? All right, so like I said, CPT can only be granted per term. That to be said, if you wanna do it in this winter term, um, then your, your CPT has to end in the winter term. If you wanna extend it to the spring term, you have to apply for another CPT in the spring term that covers the spring term date. Okay. Yeah. Next, um, could you go through the I-9 process in the context of CPT? Do I need to finish applying for CPT before I can start I-9? Um, so I-9 process is, is actually part of the payroll process um, by uh, by the employer. So usually I-9 doesn't really begin until the first day of employment. So yes, you absolutely need to apply for CPT because that's the authorization before you can even begin working. Um, so when you join the, the, the internship, um, the first day the employer will, will give you more information on the I-9 process. All right, what information should an offer letter contain? So basically, um, you need to make sure it's on the employer's letterhead. It has to have your uh, a brief information about your job duties, your in, uh, intended employment dates, and also, um, you know, also the letter has to be signed by your employer. Okay. Um, is it acceptable to declare two majors and one of them is directly related to the job? Um, yes, you, you can do CPT for a, a major program. Um, so as long as you make sure that the, the experience is related to that particular major, then it's fine. Next one, if I do internship from mid-December to mid-February, uh, which overlaps the spring semester and I'm Still, I want to do a PhD defense during or after the spring term, which is around May or June. Can I do the PhD defense and graduate? I'm not sure I actually understand your question. So you're saying you want to you want to do the internship in the winter term and apply for CPT until February, and you want to defend and defend your doctoral study in the spring term as well, in May or June. 
I don't see any problems of doing that. So if you if you still have any questions, you can actually reach out to your IAS supervisor. We can talk about that in more details. So basically, what um, you're like I said, if you want to do an internship or the uh, the winter internship, um, it has to end before the spring term starts, and you can apply for another CPT from the uh, from January to February, and that seems okay for me based on your description. And then later you you know you grad you want to graduate in May or June and do the doctoral defense that as long as you have a valid dissertation course registered in the spring I don't foresee any issues with that but again due to the time sake we actually cannot look into details of your record right now so if you do have specific questions about that or you still have concerns reach out to your advisor and we can uh, look into that thank you um, just a little a reminder for those two people that raised their hands, if you have questions, please put in the Q&A box so that we can answer. Thank you. Um, so next question, if, if I work, if we work as a research assistant for a Penn school, but not school that we're studying, do we need to apply for CPT? Um, if the research assistant position is on campus employment, um, you don't need CPT. CPT is only for off campus employment. All right, next one. Do we have to be in the country after submitting this assistant application? I plan on applying within the next week and it will be out of the country from April 25th and my internship starts May 1st is remote. Well, for assistant application, um, you actually have to be in person to um, apply for it. But after that, um, as long as you have a valid like mailing address to receive the, the card, actually it's fine but you have to make sure your uh, address is valid to receive the SSN card because it will be mailed back to you. Um, okay, so for someone that will be working for PERM, P is how I say P-U-R-M, um, do they still need to apply for CPT? Um, it depends on where you will be doing the, the research. I assume it's the summer research work. Um, if, if the research takes place on Penn campus, you're working with a Penn faculty and it's paid uh, by Penn, then it's considered on campus employment. You would not need CPT. Um, but if you um, are working with a faculty, um, it is paid by Penn, but the location is not on campus, then we need to look at it to see maybe that position qualifies uh, as an on campus employment, but takes place at an off campus location. So um, you should reach out to your ISIS advisor uh, just to confirm um they, just so that we understand where you will be working because that's really important in determining whether or not you need cpt i just want to sorry i just want to jump to the very last question i think i have already answered that um if do you have to be in person after submitted ssn i think i have already answered that you have to be in person when you are in the u.s to apply. you have to be in the u.s to apply for ssn but after you apply for it you can just make sure you have a valid address to receive the card, which means it's okay for you to travel, but make sure you can receive the card. I hope that's clear to you. Next one, um, the offer letter, if it is okay, um, if I, I can find all information about the numbers of work hours one week on the company's job application page. Yeah, so basically if it is for the summertime, there is no hour requirement. So you could work, um, you can work as part-time, you can work as a full-time. Really, it does not have any like hour restrictions. It is only applying for students if they are doing CPT in semester. It has to be part-time based. It has to be less than 20 hours. So if you're doing it in the summertime, it's okay if you don't have specific hour uh, listed on the offer letter, but you do need to indicate what is the, you know, the start day and end day. If they don't have a specific end day, um, they only say it will be, uh, you start on June 1st, it's gonna be 10 weeks internship, then you need to calculate the end day and then provide on the CPTI 20 request. Great. Uh, next question, um, how detailed should job detail be in the offer letter? Um, offer letter only says the position, uh, not description of the job. Um, 
my recommendation is for for you to reach out to the employer if possible to, um, to actually do list um, job duties um, because as we mentioned in the past, uh, not past or earlier, um, that's job duty is how you um, can determine or USCIS down the road if they need to look at your past ex employment history, how that position is related to your major or, or degree program. So I think it's really important that you, um, you have that description listed in the offer letter. Juan, you All want right. to add something? Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's great. That's perfect. Okay. Next one, my employer asked me to complete I-9 after getting that CPTI-20. Do I have to wait till the start date of my internship? What do you mean, do you have to wait until the start date of your internship? Do you mean you want to start the I-9 process after the start date, or do you want to start the employment itself after the start date? If it is for the I-9 process, um, usually I-9 is just an HR process to verify your immigration eligibility to work. So if you get the CPTI-20 and then you um, you can provide to your employer the CPTI-20 to finish the I-9 process, but you have to wait until the CPT start date to um, engage in the employment itself. Yeah, and then also just to add to the I-9, um, I-9 is usually due for the employer, uh, for the employee on the first day of the job. Um, so I think sometimes employers just want to send you the form so that you are ready, I guess, to submit the form on the first day of the job. All right. Any, any, any? And we have another okay. one. Um, okay. Um, can I do an internship using my CPT in the spring semester while having an online course unit? It'll be in my second year of master's, also my last semester. Also, what is the difference between pre conversion BT and CPT? Um, actually, Juan, do you do you know about the online course? Whether see. that's that's yeah. real okay, okay for CPT. All right. Uh, let me see. Can I do an addition? Is my CP in the spring semester while I have an online course unit? Master also my last term. Okay. So normally we have to look into specific programs are you in, what programs are you in, what school are you in, and to provide this kind of consultations to you. And also keep in mind, if it is a last semester and the students actually have to be in person at Penn to study. And for the online courses itself, regardless if you're doing CPD or not, for the online courses or not, you can only take no more than one CU for online course. And if usually if it is a last academic semester and students have other degree required courses um, to choose, um, other than the one online course, you have to choose the in-person course instead of the online course. So that to be said, for your question right now, I would recommend you to reach out to your advisor instead of, um, you know, for this instead of asking the question right here, because we need to look into your detailed program information. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, we'll get a few more. Um, is it okay if some information is on the company's job application website, not an actual offer letter? Um, again, I think it's to, it's to your own benefit to have the job duties and dates um, Include it in a job offer letter. Um, as we mentioned, if down the road um, you need to show proof of employment and how that's related to your your study, um, you should be able to show the offer letter that has all the information included, not to pull um, a, from a website because um, that's that can that's not specific to your position. So it, it's important that you have that listed um, for your um, own job offer letter. All right, next one. As a Wharton student, if I uh, want to do in-semester internship in my second year, would that require CPT? Yes, you have to. So as long as you're doing any off-campus employment, regardless if it is paid, in, unpaid, in-semester, uh, summer CPT, winter CPT, it has to have work authorizations, okay? So yes to your answer, uh, to your question. 
Um, last question, is obtaining SSN required before the start day? Um, the earliest that implies a week before. Um, so I'm wondering. Um, I think you should reach out to your um, internship employer uh, to find out whether SSN is absolutely required on the first day uh, of job. Um, sometimes employers would allow you to, to start without an SSN as long as you can show that you're in the process of applying. Um, and then you would just then update them with your number once you receive. So I think you should reach out to uh, the employer uh, to find out what their requirement is in terms of SSN. Yes. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, the submitted I think, questions. Yeah. Okay, next one. To start the CPT process, the first step is IPEM. No. To start the CPT process, the first step is to talk to your academic department, find out if there is a CPT course for you, and register the CPT course. And then, uh, if you have a job offer on hand, then the next step is actually move to IPEN to apply for CPT I-20. Okay. I think that's All the right. last one. Unless anyone has any other questions, we still have a few minutes left. All right, so this is actually our social media of ISSS. Feel free to subscribe and also follow us. We have um, event sets posted on our social media as well. So um, feel free to share and join us in our future events. And thank you everyone do for- the page coming. for them to do the, the survey? Yeah, this one. I actually just moved. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I moved. I during the whole Q and A session is on this page. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you everyone for you. joining us today, and um, good luck with your CPT and internship. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.